So for decades, corporations have assigned tracking numbers to individual Americans to better monitor who we are, where we go, and what we want to buy. A new book called The Hank Show by Mackenzie Funk looks into how some of this tracking got started and it focuses on the life of one man, Hank Asher. Mackenzie joins me now. This is a really fascinating book and topic, but first of all, I have to ask, who is Hank Asher and why did you decide to write a book about him? Hank Asher was the, the king of the data brokers and data miners. He was known as the father of data fusion, but before that, he was a house painter and a condo painter in Florida. Wow. And then a cocaine smuggler. Oh, well, so he had a very diverse resume. He did. So, you know, as a journalist, we actually have seminars we go to to teach us how to data mine. Will you kind mm -hmm. of explain what that is? Sure. The data mining would be taking information from these big troves of data that we have and trying to see insights from sort of the raw information. Mm -hmm. A data broker would be someone who sells this to corporate interests or news organizations like us. So somebody does and they, they build this AI model to help sort through all this, right? How is Hank's work as a computer programmer, how has that impacted Americans as a whole? Well, he has assigned, a, as you said, a tracking number, and his company's assigned a tracking num number to each one of us. Each one and of us. Each one of us, every adult in this country has not just one tracking number, but multiple from different corporations. And so everything you do is collated around this, this information, this, this number. Okay. And so it has followed us for years, 30 years. I gotta ask, because I mean, this is like way up here and I wanna bring it down here. Like, mm -hmm. how do they assign the tracking number? Like, where does it come from? What master machine is creating this? Well, his companies and others like them built supercomputers before the, they became normal. If right. you can think about, it's hard to remember back in the 90s <laughs> when you couldn't just go to Google and look someone yeah, up. Yeah, no, that didn't happen. For, you couldn't do it. For a while. And so it was so powerful at the time when he built these things to be able to just type in someone's name and see where they've lived, who they knew, who they've lived with, what they bought, and kind of get a sense of who their associates are, what neighborhoods they live in, what cars they drive, what, what they're into, their interests. But that had to be based on other public forms of government and, and mm -hmm. things also being online at the time, right? Wasn't it dependent on that and their on, data? Online, no. But it did depend on government data. So, early so on. someone actually had to go out and physically find that information and put it into the supercomputer. Exactly. This was sitting in computers in, say, the DMVs. Okay. Uh, and Florida, where he got his start, has a very open public records system. Uh -huh. And much like Washington State, we are the top two in the governments giving away the people's information for the oh, right that's reasons. That's good to know. For, for the, the right, right reasons. reasons. But when these computers came along, they could do things with it that were never anticipated. Wow. And so getting every driver's license from the state, every marriage license, every fishing license, every gun license. Oh, wow. And that's just the beginning. And then they layered more and more and more on top of it, tracking each of us with these numbers. So this is a lot to, to try to wrap our minds around. Was there anything that surprised you specifically when writing this book? Yeah, well, the, the character of Hank Asher, I, I don't want to make it sound boring or all about these numbers because he was the funniest person. He was a, a larger than life character, everyone said. He was hated and loved more than almost anyone I've heard hated about. Hated and loved? Both. Angel and devil, people call him. Well, it's, he's and, certainly, I mean, house painter and drug smuggler mm -hmm. and computer programmer. I mean, that's, that's a lot. What is his legacy now? Well, he was the one who cracked open this. And if you think about, yes, there's Facebook now. Yes, there's mm -hmm. Google. All the information yeah. that these net giants have on us. But you can always opt out of that to some degree. Right, right. You can always not sign up for Facebook. The legacy of Asher and his ilk is information that has tracked us for 30 years. And it shows trajectory of your life. It shows who you really know. In my case, it showed my best friend, his wife, his wife's family, their addresses. It shows my wife's brother's wife's family. It's crazy. And all of their addresses in Florida. And it can map out this whole thing of your life. So. You know, we don't have much time left, but I have to say, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? And what do you hope people take from your book? <laughs> it is neither perfectly good nor perfectly bad. But I do think that the more that computers can look at us and decide, based on our history, make projections about our future, the more that can damage the American dream. How can you get ahead if your entire life is based on what you've had before you? Yeah. How can you break out of your rut?
maybe you can't. That's such a good point. Well, thank you so much for coming here and chatting with us about us and answering all my questions. It was a pleasure <laughs> speaking with you. <laughs> and just a reminder, Mackenzie is holding an author event next week on Wednesday, October 11th at Third Place Books, which is out there in Ravenna. So go check it out if you want your mind blown and you want to find out a little bit more about what they know about all of us. <laughs> <laughs>